Welcome to SF Jobs Lab. We bring you all possible solution of interview question, including most efficient one. And in today's problem, we are going to find out Pythagorean triplet in the array. So let's understand the question clearly. So we have a array of positive integer in which we need to find a triplet ABC, which satisfies this condition A square plus B square equal to C square, where ABC is an element of array. And our function should return true if we have such kind of triplets available in our array or else function should return false. So for example, if input array has this element 9, 3, 1, 6, 10, 4, 8, then this should return true. Why? Just because here we have a triplet available which will satisfy this condition 6 square plus 8 square equal to 10 square, right? Similarly, if we have a input array 9, 3, 1, 6, 4, 8, then our method should return false just because we don't have any such kind of triplet which will satisfy this condition a square plus b square equal to c square. Before you go to the solution part, we would request you to pause this video and try to solve this problem to yourself first. Most efficient solution will have three steps. In step one, we will square every element of input array. And then step two, we will sort our squared array in increasing order. Once we do that, then in step three, we will be finding a pair x, y such that x plus y equal to z, where you can say x is nothing but a square, y is b square, and z is c square. Step one and step two uh, looks pretty easy. So we are not going to discuss about it much, but uh, let's look into the step three that how we are doing a search operation to find out a uh, pair x and y. After execution of uh, step number one and two, uh, our input array will be looking like this 1, 9, 16, 36, 64, 81, and 100. Let's name them as a squared array. So in search of pair x and y, uh, what the first thing first we need to do, we need to set our z value. And that z value will start from a last index of uh, squared array, starting from here. And it will go till second index of the array. And then in second step, we need to find x and y in between first element of uh, the array and z value. Initially, it will start from here. So here, x, so x will be pointing to 1 and y will be pointing to 81. And then we need to follow the process according to this uh, piece of code where if uh, sum of x element and y element is equal to z element that means we have found our pair x and y then in that case we need to return true if not satisfied if sum of uh, x element and y element is greater than uh, element of z in that case we need to decrement y value else we need to increment x value and this step we'll be doing till y is greater than x. So this will be under while condition. And if nothing happens in this while condition, then we need to decrement our z value and then we need to repeat the same process. So remember this, this while loop will be executing how many times? It will be executing n minus two times. Now let's execute our this algorithm on a squared array and let's find out uh, whether we have a triplets or not. Uh, initial state of uh, the input sequence uh, will be looking like this where z value uh, will be pointing to 100 and x will be pointing to 1 and y is pointing to 81. Then uh, we need to add uh, element of x and y uh, which will be 82. So 82 is less than 100. That means we need to increase x by 1 and now x is pointing to 9. Then summation of x and y will be a 90 which is again uh, less than 100. That means we need to increase our x value by 1 again. And now x is pointing to 16. Adding 16 and 81 will bring uh, 97 total. So 97 is uh, less than 100. That means we need to increase our x by 1 again. And now x will point to 36. Uh, now we'll add 36 to 81. So 36 plus 81 is definitely more than 100. So in this case, we need to decrement y value now. So in this situation, SA of x is 36. S A of Y is 64 and S A of Z is 100. So addition of X and Y is uh, equal to 100. That means we have found our triplet and that triplet value would be 6, 8 and 10. We were lucky enough that uh, we got our uh, triplet in first iteration itself. Otherwise, uh, we would have uh, decreased our Z value by 1. Our X would have started from 1 and Y would have started from 64. 
and we would have done all this entire process uh, once again so this process will keep on uh, doing uh, till n minus 2 times and now let's calculate time complexity of the entire process to calculate time complexity uh, we need to quickly recap our steps so in step 1 uh, we were squaring up all the array elements to doing that we need to scan our input array only once so that will be taking linear time and in step 2 we were sorting our squared array so best sorting mechanism will take n log n and in step 3 we were finding our pair x and y so if you have observed closely then every iterations we were able to find out our pair x and y in linear time and we have to iterate uh, n minus 2 time so every iterations linear time and n minus 2 iteration that means after n minus 2 iterations the time complexity of step 3 would be order of n square so finally we can say that the total time complexity of this method would be order of n plus order of n log n plus order of n square and that would be equal to our order of n square and if you talk about space complexity so apart from our input array we are not using any extra space here so that will be a constant so point to be noted here that we are making changes in our input array so let's say if in the interview time if interview is saying that we are not allowed to change our input array or the input array is uh, read only type the question is in that case can we still find out uh, the solution in order of n square so the answer is yes we can still uh, find out our solution in order of n square but in that case we will be using uh, order of n square extra space so let's quickly see this uh, solution as well so in that case uh, we will be using a two for loop like this and what we'll do uh, we'll be using a hash table and we will put a value of a i square plus a j square into that hash table and once we are done with that then we will scan entire array and we will be looking for a k square value from the hash table if we will get a non null value from hash table that means we have found our pair right and in that case we will return true so to building up this hash table uh, how much time uh, we are taking we are taking order of n square and because of time complexity is n square that means we have n square values to be stored in a hash table and for that we would need n square extra space so space complexity for this step one process will be order of n square and this will be our time complexity of step one now let's analyze second step so in second step we are scanning only once and getting any value uh, from hash table will be always a constant time so overall the time complexity of this second step would be order of n and in space complexity here uh, is constant so finally we can say uh, total time complexity of this method would be order of n square from step 1 plus order of n from step 2 and that will be equal to order of n square and space complexity will be order of n square from step 1 plus order of 1 from step 2 and that will be equal to order of n square i hope you like the solution and if you do then please subscribe our youtube channel and hit the bell icon to get more video tutorial like this if you wanted to have a detailed discussion of this question then you can find that link in your top right side where we have explained uh, all possible solution of this question starting from worst case to best case keep watching our video and see you in next interview question bye